Hello everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing episodes 126 through 129 of Dragon Ball Super. I mentioned last month that the next episode review was going to be my last episode review since this month is said to be the month that the anime of Dragon Ball Super ends. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but there's been a lot of things happening that I'd like to talk about, and I'm sure if I waited till the end of the tournament then that video would be like 30 minutes long. But anyways, let's take a look at what happened in episode 126. I think this episode was alright. As expected, we didn't get any surprises coming from 17. Sadly, he does only rely on his unlimited key blasts and energy barrier. Or at least the creators can only remember those techniques of his. But Frieza utilizes two of his old techniques, like his psychokinesis and imprisonment ball. We actually got to see the most useless attempt at defeating their opponent in Dragon Ball history. 17 shoots a bunch of key blasts, causing a bunch of rubble to fall on top of Topo. 17's Android software must be getting old and beginning the glitch process because that's gotta be the worst idea of defeating an opponent. That couldn't take down Mr. Satan if he was paralyzed from the neck down. Even Carrot Monster, the rabbit from Dragon Ball could survive this. Remember the rabbit that could turn anyone into a carrot? Speaking of that guy, they should have recruited this guy on their team. He could turn Topo into a carrot and chuck him off the arena. That'd be funny. But anyways, after 17 failed to take down Super Shredder, Frieza appears and instead of going back into his golden form, he decides to bust out with some old school moves of his. I know the reason why he hasn't turned back into his golden form is because he's been badly hurt and he doesn't have enough energy to do so. Well, seeing that Goku can shout out so many transformations in such a small amount of time and continue learning even more transformations and mastering them, that means I can expect 10 times more from Frieza. Because after all, he can manage to gain enough power to go from a Super Saiyan 1 level to a Super Saiyan God level within 4 or 6 months of training. Also, when Frieza survived Goku's Spirit Bomb, he was able to transform into his full power form, and here, since he survived such a blast, leaving him to appear damaged in the same exact way as when he appeared to have survived the Spirit Bomb, he should have still been able to transform. I know they're both different attacks with different destructive power, but back then, Frieza wasn't as strong as he is now, and that Spirit Bomb wasn't as strong as how it would be by now. So the estimated impact would pretty much be the same in both cases. Another reason why he still has enough power to go into his golden form is because after he keeps coming back, he still performs powerful key attacks against Topo and Jiren later on. However, this is where he fails at choosing the right special attacks. Frieza uses his imprisonment ball and captures Topo, leaving him open for a powerful attack. But instead, Frieza goes with his psychokinesis to lift and throw rubble at him. Okay, seriously, what happened here? First 17 tries to drop rubble on Topo, assuming that would bring an end to the newly god of destruction, and now even Frieza tries the same thing? I think Topo's attacks must have gave Frieza brain damage. I mean, the guy just transformed into a god of destruction, and their best efforts to put him down is by throwing rubble at him? I was starting to wonder if profanity was the next tactic in line. So after seeing that throwing rocks at him would inevitably fail, Topo kicks Frieza's ass again, and then we see Jiren's fight with Goku and Vegeta, and by the looks of it, it looks like Jiren is finally having a bit of trouble taking them on. Either that or he's just starting to get annoyed. But then Topo attacks Vegeta and now he's Vegeta's opponent. Honestly, this episode was pretty good. It was pretty good. The only complaint I had was with the beginning part where both Frieza and Seventeen use rubble to try and defeat Topo. I don't care how big a fan of Dragon Ball you are, you can't deny that that was the stupidest plan of attack that they both went with. Vegeta's fight with Topo was interesting but very short because it turns out that Vegeta manages to defeat Topo by the end of the episode. Vegeta used his self-destruct attack that he used against Fat Boo, which killed him, only now he actually managed to survive it because of how powerful he's gotten. Topo just transformed into a god of destruction in the previous episode. Wasn't this a little too early to defeat him? I know the creators want to keep Jiren as the main strongest opponent, but since this is supposed to be a team tournament, wouldn't it have been a lot better if Vegeta got to take on Topo while Goku fought Jiren both at the same time till the end? Damn, this was yet another wasted opportunity to end the tournament with a big bang. Goku and Vegeta have been competing to be the best, and once again Goku ends up being the main center of attention. 
Toei knows that the fans aren't really liking the fact that Goku is getting all the attention throughout the series, and yet they just can't seem to let go of his ass. It's not a complaint, I'm, I know it sounds like it of course, I'm just, I just wonder if we could have seen Frieza actually take Topo seriously and go all out in his golden form before Vegeta ended up being his opponent. Maybe go into his full power transformation while in his golden form, giving him an advantage like when Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. But maybe he'll be able to do that exact same thing that I'm talking about for Jiren. Assuming Goku doesn't just end up taking on Jiren alone till the end. But now, let's move on to what happens in episode 127. So in this episode, we see that Goku, Vegeta, and Seventeen are working together trying to find a way to hurt Jiren. Because every time they find a weak spot on Jiren, he instantly counters it. And what do you know, Seventeen caught Jiren with a surprise attack that actually harmed him. This showed us that Jiren can be hurt, but only when he doesn't see the attack coming. But when he performed that sneak attack, he announced his presence behind him just before launching the attack. Anybody could have dodged it, especially Jiren. And since we were seeing that Frieza wasn't out, then chances are that he's going to surprise Jiren with a powerful enough surprise attack that could injure him greatly. But when Frieza pops up by the end of the episode, his surprise attack is just a regular kick. And he wasn't even in his golden form! And you can't have the argument that Frieza didn't have enough strength in this part because he does turn into his golden form after this, after his surprise attack fails. I was really expecting more from Frieza, he's been a good part of the tournament, so, well for me, so my expectations were pretty high on this episode, but the delivery was limp. So to sum up episode 127, it was an entertaining episode, but sadly to me there wasn't any tension building up during the fight because we still don't know the limits of Jiren's power. Whenever someone lands a hit, Jiren suddenly appears to not really be hurt, and then he launches a stronger attack. This has happened so many times already. Both Goku and Vegeta just recently got a new transformation, and what do you know, Jiren still continues to do the exact same thing. He gets hit, he retaliates with an even stronger hit, roll the shocking musical theme, rinse and repeat. It's getting very repetitive and cliched that I'm not really expecting much from Jiren now. I'm not really hyped when watching this episode. It is entertaining, but I'm not hyped because the opponent is like Superman. Too much power and attention to a guy who doesn't even look like he deserves it. So Mr. Justice over here decides to attack Goku and Vegeta with a powerful attack that ends up killing Seventeen. But just because he sacrificed himself to protect Goku and Vegeta, then Jiren gets a pass on not being disqualified for killing in the tournament? Hey Toei and Toriyama, if you're gonna be breaking every rule in the fucking tournament, then why the fuck did you add rules in the first place? Not to mention the fact that if this is supposed to be the end of the series, they're gonna end it with a tournament full of broken rules, and one of them happens to be no killing, which means that everyone capable of doing so needs to hold back so they don't kill someone. But when Jiren does it, you don't disqualify him because technically Seventeen sacrificed himself to protect Goku and Vegeta. Wow, if that's the way they want to play it, I can think of a thousand loopholes for killing in the tournament. This guy's death was his own fault because he tried to stop Jiren's fist with his chin. This guy's death was his own fault because his heart gave out. He died because he was unhealthy, not because of Jiren's attack. This guy's death was his own fault because he knew he wasn't stronger than Jiren and he knew the consequences of messing with someone like Jiren. It was like slapping a bull, he knew the risk. You see what I mean? You can come up with so many loopholes to avoid getting disqualified in this tournament. Let me know in the comments what are some of the loopholes you can think of. Now, some say that Seventeen self-destructed with his android bomb. It didn't look like he self-destructed at all, it looked like he just took the hit and bam, that was it. But I could have sworn that they wished to remove the bomb inside the androids. Or maybe it was just for Eighteen. I gotta take a look at the end of the Cell Saga for this one. But whether or not it's true, Seventeen was not going to survive that attack. Granted, the self-destruct bomb should have ended up killing him along with Goku and Vegeta since they were right next to him. And you can't put up an energy barrier when you're dying. So that was pretty fucking dumb to be honest. If he did self-destruct, it couldn't do the opposite effect of what an explosion creates. I find it funny that we've seen Vegeta pull off a self-destruct move and survived it, but the explosion was supposed to be capable of destroying the entire tournament. The arena is not that small, but it's not that big either. 
But anyways, Jiren should have been disqualified. I'm not saying that that's what should have happened since it sounds like a terrible way to end the tournament. I'm just saying that he did break the rules and technically tried to kill them since they couldn't take cover and 17 had to sacrifice himself to protect them. So the last thing to talk about from this episode is Jiren's backstory. <laughs> I, I don't think I have to say anything about this. It's clear that no imagination was put into it. They simply took a regular superhero backstory and slapped it on this guy. Nothing new. It doesn't change the fact that he's the worst antagonist in the series. Thank God that the animation of this saga has been pretty damn good so far. Otherwise, these last moments would literally mean nothing to me. Because it's looking like both Toei and Toriyama don't know what else to do. I'm pretty sure they still don't know how to, how to make Jiren lose at the end. But I'll tell you this, I'm not keeping any hopes up. I'll leave that for the manga version. Now let's move on to episode 128. This episode is easy to summarize. Throughout half the episode we see Vegeta completely exhausted, still trying to fight Jiren but in his base form. The whole time I was thinking that it would be funny if the tournament time, like the time limit finally expired and Jiren is left looking like a fucking moron for playing with his opponents in a time limit tournament where the team with the most teammates can be the winner. But of course, that's not what's gonna happen, even though it's been hours instead of minutes or seconds. Vegeta's attempts in this episode were completely useless, sadly. I understand that they were showing us that Vegeta was trying to fight with every breath in his body, but in this series, you never know when a character is truly out of stamina or power, or if they're really injured because of the lack of blood in Dragon Ball Super. Heck, there was a moment where Vegeta was falling off the arena and he had enough energy to grab onto the ledge with his ankle. If you have enough strength to hold your own body weight with your ankle, then it's once again another example that strength and stamina in this series are a goddamn mystery. And not in a good way. So he saved himself from falling off the arena just to continue fighting in his useless base form just to get punched off the arena again. But only this time he doesn't save himself. Now it's Goku alone versus Jiren with Frieza hiding somewhere. Goku gets a, a little bit of energy from Vegeta even though he he didn't have enough energy to save himself. But whatever I guess. So Goku fights Jiren in his Super Saiyan blue form. Doesn't change the outcome as expected. But then luckily Goku goes into his Ultra Instinct form for the third time. Evolution, right? <laughs> now we get to episode 129. So in this episode, we see that Goku is taking on Jiren in his Ultra Instinct form for the third time, and one thing I liked that they added to Goku's Ultra Instinct is that he has the speed and reflexes to avoid Jiren's hits, but it's only his defenses that are high. He's still having trouble attacking Jiren. He eventually manages to land a hit on Jiren, but once again, we end up getting another Jiren cliche. Goku looks like he's about to land a hard finishing blow, but then it's revealed that Jiren counters it, and he follows up with an even stronger attack. So if you're wondering if I'm still not excited about what's going on, you can't blame me for not getting all hyped about the situation since it's a rinse and repeat process that we keep getting from Jiren. Another cliche we see is that Jiren unleashes an increase in power, but nothing really changes. We see all this aura, he doesn't change in his design of course, he doesn't get bulkier, <laughs> And since power levels are fucking random, especially with this guy, then I have no idea whether this changes anything or not. By the end of the episode, Goku reaches a new form, Super Saiyan White. I'm sure they won't call it that. They'll probably give it some insanely honorable name like Ultra Instinct Divine Fist of All Gods or some shit like that. But ultimately, it's Super Saiyan White. I told you guys that Toriyama said that he was gonna do it, like, two years ago I think it was. Sadly, it doesn't look like it's Super Saiyan 1 but white, but instead it looks like it's Goku's base hair form, but white. So, what do I think about it? Well, we were just introduced to Ultra Instinct in this tournament along with tons of other transformations from others, and now Goku has achieved yet another form. And I have no fucking clue of how powerful it is. As soon as Goku pulls it off, Jiren busts out with even more power. Is it me or does it feel like I'm describing something a kid came up with? Seriously, it's been a long road with this series. The series is said to end in episode 131, which means that there are only two episodes left, if that's true. 
and I can't believe that I am not really looking forward to these last couple episodes. Sorry if that disappoints a lot of you, but remember, we all have different opinions. Maybe right now you're super excited for what's going on, but who knows, maybe years later you'll look back at the series and realize that perhaps it wasn't as exciting as you thought it was. It's just that for me, there are a lot of missed opportunities, and you could really tell that these episodes weren't planned together. They were made as they aired. I'm not talking about the animation. I mean, of course, that that happened as, as time went on. <laughs> I mean the story. What happens next? It didn't feel like they bothered to complete the story of the Tournament of Power before it started. And the animation it was better than the rest of the sagas in the series, but that and the fight scenes just weren't enough to keep me on the edge of my seat. Not when they kept missing so many opportunities. That's why when the Tournament of Power is over, I'm gonna make a video about the top 10 biggest missed opportunities in this saga alone. I did one on the, the top 10 biggest missed opportunities for Dragon Ball Super, excluding the Tournament of Power because it wasn't over yet and there were already lots of missed opportunities that I could count. But anyways, I hope that at least you guys enjoyed the episodes better than I did. I still look forward to Toyotaro's version of the Tournament of Power for the Dragon Ball Super manga. I'm sure that will be a satisfying version for sure. Sorry it took me forever to make this video. I was originally going to make one last episode uh, episode review for the finale, which would include my take on these episodes, but I already had a lot of things to say. I, I couldn't wait any longer. Plus, that means you'll get two more episode reviews after this one. So with that said, that's it for this episode review. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please leave a like, share with others, and subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget to click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button to notify you of every new video that gets uploaded to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr to find out which videos are up next and whatever random posts I make. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.